Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Juan Yakos, can you read the overlay chat? Like on the stream feed? Oh, Asmodeus, you're here? Awesome. Thank you so much. That's good to know. Much appreciated. It's tiny there. It gets bigger on the main feed. It's just kind of small because there's not much workable space in this banner area to work with a chat feed. You know what I mean? How are you, random ladybird? Boop together, how are you? You hear me just fine? I just want to make sure you can read the chat. And remember, if you're watching in like a vertical format, you can always turn your phone wide if you're on like a mobile to get a little bit better view. Um... That might make it a bit larger. Alrighty. I will be right back.
All right, can you hear me? We coming through loud and clear? Cool. Changing. Oh. There we go. Hello, hello, everyone. How we doing today? <laughs> Sorry, am I way loud today? I just turned down the mic level there. I noticed it was kind of high. Is that a bit better? Should go Mac music. Yeah. So welcome one and all to the damn stream. The first ever multi damn stream. So we are simulcasting to Pretty much every major stream platform you can right now. Uh, so, for the first time ever, we're streaming to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Kick, Trovo. The list goes on. It's like a whole bunch of platforms. And I'm very excited to start uh, facilitating these multi-streams to allow more members of our community to tune into them. Because some people have... Uh, you know, different uh, preferences. So right now I have a tool that I'm using called Restream that allows me to, it shows all the, the feeds in one so I could see it all. So yeah, I see everything y'all are saying. So for instance, Mike Smith from YouTube. Hello, thank you for waving. Asmodeus, Watchtower, Frau Beer Frau, Random Lady of Bird. See, I see all of you talking. So I set up a kick account just simply to, you know, have representation there. I'm not 100% sold on the platform yet, but um <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Restream is pretty cool. We're able to simulcast on all these platforms simultaneously. So, uh, raise of hands, who do we got here from Twitch? And by the way, the chat feed you see above is all of those chats, so you should be able to kind of keep track of who's who at the zoo. Welcome, Twitch fam. And by the way, welcome all to the stream. If this is your first time tuning in, especially for those of you on the other platforms, you probably haven't seen a damn stream before. My name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. This is an official Dungeon Alchemist stream. And the point of the damn streams is to showcase maps and assets that are shared on the Steam Workshop. Uh, I got a lot of, uh, you know, cool uh, maps in store today. And if y'all have any suggestions of maps that I should take a look at, let me know. <laughs> um, typically, Virgil, I say damn fam, but I just wanted to kind of distinguish really quickly for for the first time. And then after that, we'll say damn fam. Anyway, so uh, YouTube, raise your hands. How many we got here in chat? So I had this map kind of preloaded from the workshop before I started. Uh, it's made by the lovely Dyson Rules, and uh, it's just a just a stunning little town. I love the layout. I love that there was cobble all throughout. Great use of workshop assets. It's a really really lovely build. <laughs> so
So, kind of moving on there. Trying to make sure I've got both chat feeds open. It is a really nice map. So from uh, from YouTube, we've got uh, Blips, Mike Smith, Carlos. We've got a few people watching. That's a p impressive considering, you know, this is like our second stream on YouTube. So I appreciate the support. Uh, Mike from YouTube asks, how large of a map can be made? Well, the map size is kind of a direct correlation of a couple of things. Uh, mainly your computer specs. So the more powerful of a computer you have backing Dungeon Alchemist, the larger maps you can make. Um, that being said, uh, you can do a few things to help improve map size uh, and, you know, run the run Dungeon Alchemist a little bit better if your computer isn't necessarily like a, a powerful, you know, gaming rig or a streaming rig or, you know, maybe something for... Uh, you know, uh, computer-aided drafting or 3D design, you know, some, you know, unless your computer is really powerful, you basically, most people average anywhere from about a 20 by 20 to a 40 by 40 map is about the biggest, they, the largest map they can get. But like myself, I can go up to like 150 by 150 on stream while y'all are watching. So it really just depends, depending on your computer specs, Is it's, it's a wide net this map is full of assets from the workshop just loaded with them which i love all of these assets you can find on steam workshop which means you can add them to your collection and use them to improve your map so if you're wondering how these roofs roofing was added Oh my gosh. Uh, so I remember about a guy trying to make a really large map like that, Garfield. And we were like, wait, how big of a map are you trying to make? And he's like, something like this squared. And we're like, no, you, you can't do that in Dungeon Alchemist. I don't think it fried his computer. I just think it was frozen. It was just sitting there for forever. Unless it was a different application that you're talking about. But in the, in the uh, asset browser on the workshop, you can look at, you know, uh, either collections, for instance, of pre, like, you know, uh, basically someone configured all these assets together in a group so you can download them en masse and save time. So, like, there's prefab houses here and medieval village prefabs. These are pretty much what a lot of that village is made up of. And these were made and shared by one of our very talented and amazing moderators, uh, Asmodeus, here in Twitch chat. But uh, you know him as Dallas RT on on uh, Steam. So if you've downloaded anything from Dallas RT on the workshop, that is an Asmodeus asset. So thanks again, Asmodeus, for that. <clears throat> So I just want to point out that during these streams, for those that are new to the streams, you uh, you can use these streams sort of like an AMA format. Think of it as like the chance to ask questions, uh, you know, provide suggestions and feedback, get live support, um, etc. When it all you know related to Dungeon Alchemist. So if you have any questions or need any guidance. Uh, then just let me know here in chat and I will do my best to walk you through it. So if you're looking at these maps, you're like, how did they do that? Let me know and I'll walk you through it. I'm looking right now on Facebook. We have four viewers. On YouTube, we have 12, which we have 22. Twitter doesn't say how many we have. It's more it says how many have come through, but at least 127 people dropped by. That's really cool. I like that.
So, <clears throat> let's uh, let's dive into this map really quickly. Let's take a look at the size. It is 50 by 50, so not very bad. It's a reasonable sized map. Got a nice like water feature running through the center with an island. And uh, that really just kind of is a good way to divide the map uh, visually, uh, aesthetically. You know, it's just interesting. I like this little gatehouse here. It looks like someone lives in the middle there. And like they just ran a road right through the center of their home. Interesting, to say the least. Did Garfield ask that? I didn't see. Where was that? Sorry. Is there a way to use the 3D map in a VTT? Unfortunately, Dungeon Alchemist doesn't offer any 3D exports of any kind. And I hate to burst your bubble, but I'll tell you why. Several reasons. Dungeon Alchemist is a combination. It's essentially a very cleverly designed application that the assets are essentially smoke and mirrors. Imagine a very basic shape, like a, like a square or a rectangle or a circle or a, you know, a sphere, a cylinder. And then up top of it is a very detailed paint job to make it look super detailed and intricate. That's pretty much how all assets are in Dungeon Alchemist. Smoke and mirrors. So they're not very detailed. If you were to export a Dungeon Alchemist map that was just all stock environment, stock assets, stock you know, water, all that stuff. It would just be kind of a blank blob with random shapes that have no detail at all. No color, no, you know, it'd just be like a bunch of squares and, you know, cubes and, you know what I mean? So essentially, it doesn't look that great on 3D export. We didn't plan for 3D export of any kind. Optimally, we wanted to give you the ability to build very heavily detailed maps in 3D so you can get in at every angle Export in top-down with a 3D perspective or a flattened perspective. You can export for print, uh, digital for, you know, images or video to play on, like, loops on a TV tabletop or a projector tabletop. You can also export for VTTs such as uh, Foundry, Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, Above VTT, etc. Um, obviously, I know 3D is kind of a newer thing on the market. People are interested on it. You got, like, Tabletop sim Simulator and the like. You can use our maps, our JPEG maps in Tabletop Simulator, like many people do with, you know, dungeon draft maps or whatever. They work perfectly fine in that in, in that instance. And I've actually seen members of our community do kind of like a 3D perspective wall using tools and stuff. I think it was Gore Vidal that does that. Or who was it that does that in Tabletop Simulator? Anyway, moving on. Um, I ultimately believe that you know a combination of factors will lead to the us never offering it the devs didn't design dungeon alchemist with that in mind so there isn't you know just a simple back end switch we could flip on for that to work all of our assets would have to be redesigned from the ground up that would take an excessive amount of time and redirect our efforts our you know our cash flow our team of 10 people to developing a feature that is essentially niche at the moment and not fully like realized on a grand scale. There is really no true, you know, like full 3D VTT. There is, you know, that would support a map making system like that. The maps would be massive in file size. There just has to be some kind of like either new development and or kind of, kind of a basically Dungeon Alchemist would have to be redesigned from the ground up. But like you look at Foundry, there is no stock 3D module for th stock 3D for Foundry. You'd have to do a module, which is actually locked behind a paywall. Uh, look at Tailspire. They're 3D, but they keep everything in their own ecosystem. You can't import 3D files. You have to build it inside of their ecosystem. So essentially, there really isn't a whole lot of support or motivation or like time for us to do that. And we don't want to go back on our Kickstarter promises to develop something that is very minimally desired at the moment. Nietzsche. Okay, 
So, let me turn on that weather, Bad Whiskey asks really quickly. Let's throw the snow on, actually. Under the terrain tab, we're going to go on snow, hit change terrain. Done. Bunch of snow on there, looks really good. I like it. Uh, Twitchy, you know, like I heard that years ago that DA sat down to speak with Wizards of the Coast before they were even developing their VTT or a map making system. And they essentially kind of, it didn't go like well. And uh, essentially our devs have kind of uh, just stopped trying to make talks with them a long time ago. I don't think there'll be any kind of, you know, direct interconnectivity unless they offer some sort of universal imports using you know jpegs mp4 or something like that yeah i think it's because this might be on top of something that is preventing it the house itself yep see that so the second i pull it off it it is there so what i would do to probably fix this is go to edit room see that lets the snow in here right but should allow that to stay on now oh wait was where the other roof go oh that was it anyway <laughs> funny so if you click on a room and go to the edit room panel click on the room Click show ceiling, right? That lets that opens the ceiling from for the sky and allows snow inside in this instance. But since it's covered all the time, it's like whatever. But that will allow snow to be on the rooftops there. That was the reason it wasn't, is because there was a dependency on the object below it. I pre hey, Garfield says, I love how easy DA is to use, especially amazing features like this weather. So intuitive and it makes it feel so different. Appreciate the kind words. Alternatively, if you wanted a surface to not have snow on it, sack... Uh, shared with us some time back if you place us like a flow like one of these bad boys and put an object on top of it anything on top of this object is this jumping around so much is no longer has snow on it because the flow has that property of no snow it it doesn't allow snow to be on top of it what we need though just just putting this out there just floating this into space is a toggle that it just looks like a snowflake and you could click it and then if it's off that snow won't apply to that object so you can pick and choose this uh marble building back here yeah let's see if we can open the door and take a look let's go for a tour Twitchy Sauce on Twitch says, I can say from experience that if you're more into a purchase once versus a subscription crowd, DA plus Foundry is a tag team powerhouse. And I will say one added benefit of us, you know, like I do think a lot of people like su subscription because they get added support versus a one-time purchase. You maybe only get limited support. Um, but with Dungeon Alchemist, you get continued support, even though it's a one-time purchase. And you get future updates until we leave early access. Uh, access. And uh, the thing is, is even then you'll get quality of life improvements and updates after that for free. But we do plan at some point, and many have asked this, you know, will you do sci-fi? Will you do cyberpunk? Will you offer this? Will you offer that? Once we leave early access, we plan to offer 
expansions essentially that are optional that you can that it'll be you know like a, a small purchase and that would add on to your existing dungeon alchemist library um you know probably a couple thousand objects uh for that theme so let's say cyberpunk a couple thousand cyberpunk objects maybe a couple dozen room types and 10 to 12 biomes or something like that so you'd have like a bunch of new environment types that could use the Dungeon Alchemist AI and all of its tools. What's going on, Watchtower? I, my Discord isn't muted. If you ping me at me, it will definitely go through. However, my phone does have nighttime hours. I've set aside a block of time every night where my notifications don't go off. It's silent. So I can get some rest, you know. And uh, I did that because the crossover between my boss's, like, availability and mine is pretty bad. And it's only at the late night hours. And Sometimes I'll get pinged in the middle of the night and then I can't go back to sleep. So I, you know, I spoke with them about that. We worked out a time frame where I'm completely, uh, no, you can ping me. It's fine. Feel free to ping me if you need support or have questions. If it's Dungeon Alchemist related, you can ask me anytime. I'm here to support y'all. What do you think my job is? Community manager. What do you think y'all are? The community. So I'm here to support you and provide, you know, engagement opportunities, uh, contests, giveaways, streams, support. Do I babysit? Is that Dungeon Alchemist related? <laughs> I'm a manager of one. Me. I really like this map. Really just has a good aesthetic, good mood. Feels feels good, feels lived in. You know what I mean? The snow is great too. You wanna see the ice water? Sure, let's change it to ice. You're as cold as ice, da 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 willing to sacrifice our love. Let's turn it into lava, to lava, to lava, or maybe blood. Yeah, I killed it. <laughs> it's funny because it's out of sight. Watch. Did the ice, oh, the ice did it again. It's just a bit higher. Interesting. Well, not all water bodies freeze automatically in the winter. Not everything becomes solid ice. I'll be honest with you. I've lived on the West Coast most of my life. I've only seen like a frozen river once or twice. And like, uh, you know, I've lived in mostly a warm climate in the West, Western like region of the U.S. So, I mean, I've never seen like a frozen pond. Those are pretty regular on the like East Coast of the U.S., So, raise of hands, who is excited for our next big update that is titled Magic? This is actually available on the workshop, by the way. Let me get the link for this map so you all can check it out if you want to download it. This has nothing to do with the Magic update. I just was showing off this very cool map that I found on the workshop today. Found the link. Let's pop that in the restream. What's your do not disturb mode?
Oh, I get it, Zach. I get it. Yeah. So I just shared the link. Pretty sure I did. Did it not post? What the heck? Oh, it posted twice. Okay, on my end it didn't show, so I was I was I apologize for sharing it twice. There is the the link to that map. If you want to see it, you're more than welcome to. In the restream feed it didn't show, so my apologies. Okay, cool. This map, I just saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, we have to share this one. I love it when people get creative with assets from the workshop. And what do you what do you say? This is like a pretty modernish map, you know. Not bad at all. This is essentially Dungeon Alchemist meets you know creativity <laughs> this is really good toilets look way too clean maybe th this is a respectable restaurant look at these booths this looks like something from like rainbow six or like a like a payday game or something I was just kind of impressed that someone took the time to put this all together. So I definitely wanted to share it. <laughs> it's pretty cool to say the least. <laughs> 12 monkeys just chilling out. I like how there... Oh, there is, in fact, sinks. I didn't see them before. So, this uh, map was made for... This is their first ever map, by the way. They, here's my first ever map ever on DA. I'm running a zombie apocalypse adventure this summer. My PC will, my players will start in this snack bar next to a supermarket. Since there is no modern map available, I thought that it might be useful for someone around here. Feel free to leave a comment on what I can improve. Special thanks to all the asset importers around. For a first map, this is an impressive build. Like, not only did they just completely take the, the training wheels off, they dove right in. They're using assets from the workshop. They're using what well, looks like abstracts. Oh, no, that's a sci-fi plate. Anyway, they dove right in. Mr. Meep. Meep. Okay, so let's, uh, Da Vinci. <laughs> Twitchy, right? <laughs> I don't know. I just made this in my spare time because I was bored. <laughs> Let me see here. I'm trying to find some T-users. 
Would you all be interested in seeing the promotional artwork for Magic? I just like to see what you say. It's fun. So this is the kind of promotional magic art, right? So every update we have kind of a promotional art piece for the update. So our watermark and all of our, like, this will be like the bumper at the end of trailers and stuff and teasers, which means stuff like that is forthcoming very soon. I've just been dealing with uh, my, de my dev build is, let's just say scuffed at the moment because it's a work in progress, very early alpha. So I can see things, play with it, investigate and learn, but I can't do a lot of filming and content creation because it crashes a lot or a lot of assets are broken and things just don't work. I would love to start showing it off, but I just, it's hard to do when things aren't fully functional. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's a good idea, say Sue. Putting them in the hallways and stuff, like in the, the main area, you know what I mean? Because there is some like poster boards there and stuff. I was thinking that, that'd be great for that. Really. see what else I can share. I mean, most of you have seen this stuff. But uh, here, I'll show, you know, this again. Hold on. I'm trying to find the video. So there's a new biome that is, as you can see here, this green screen, chroma key biome, that essentially is, I see it as kind of a, a first step towards, you know, allowing you to quickly remove or superimpose, or remove the background or superimpose other backgrounds into this environment um so like i use a green screen look at my eyes are kind of glowing actually i use um a green screen on stream behind me to cancel out my backdrop so i'm floating above like the the stream feed right and that green really it makes my eyes glow i'm turning into the hulk say david banner your pants are too tight <laughs> anyway so this green screen biome will allow you to similar to the uh you know kind of a uh, dark parchment backdrop have more of a plain background but instead you'll be able to quickly you know either superimpose video or an image in there or take that export and turn it into like a stamp or a tile that you can put in other maps or environments Dag. I even went for like the old school, like Lou Ferrigno Hulk. <laughs> Cause my eyes were so green. I was so ready to wrestle a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Ferrigno is the only Hulk you recognize? Okay. Yeah, like I told you, Random Lady Bird, they, they were definitely thinking of that. Remember when we discussed that a couple weeks ago? The shadows definitely don't cast on the outside, which is great. 
Um, another thing I'm working with them, and I'm hoping it'll make it in before the update launches, is I want that that biome to allow you to place objects without a building. Currently, it acts like dark parchment where you need a building to place objects. I want it to not be dependent on that, so you can just place, place an object, export that object as a tile, or, you know, a... Uh, a, you know, make a GIF or a, an animated loop, etc. Okay, uh, Sack, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I uh, honestly, Thor Ragnarok is probably one of the better Thor movies. It's pretty enjoyable all around. And, you know, media changes. That's like saying every time there's a new Doctor Who or something, you're not going to, like, you know, let, I don't know. I just think that uh, media evolves over time, changes, adapts. And it, it's interesting. You don't always have to like it or enjoy it. But, um, I mean, obviously people liked it as the whole theater was clapping and cheering, right? You would be the only confused person there, right? <laughs> Okay, sorry, what are you saying there, Twitchy? Is everyone else wrong or is it just me? <laughs> I, I will say, though, that I wish Marvel had kind of stuck with a Hulk. Like, in the last 20 years, they've had three renditions of the Hulk in, like, movie. Like, in movies themselves. And so it's just confusing. You had, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Eric Bana or whatever Hulk. And that movie was just... That movie, I mean... I watch it and enjoy it because they really captured the essence of like a Hulk comic, but the story was awful. The CG was awful. It's just a funny movie, an enjoyable action Marvel movie before there was any like canon or cohesion between their, their brands and their stuff in the, on the screen before there was an MCU. Then you have like the just pre MCU Hulk, which they still consider part of the MCU watch order with uh, Edward Norton, which is personally my favorite Hulk in the last 20 years. I think Ruffalo picked up the torch and did a great, great job, but I do think Edward Norton got the short end of the stick. Right? There's been so many Spider-Man, but that is mostly for Sony's to blame there. Because they just like pushing out a new one like every, you know, six years or so. Ten years. This map is something else. It kind of reminds me of the diner from, uh, is it like Reservoir Dogs? No, no, yeah, I think it might be Reservoir Dogs. See, that's the thing is I am a big fan of the World War Hulk arc in the comics and like the cartoon stuff that they did the movies for a few years ago was really, really good. Like, honestly, it was too good for a cartoon back in, back in the like early 2000s. It was really impressive. And I was not happy that Hulk didn't get an arc leading up to that. So they just kind of put him on the ship, had him disappear, and then he showed up again in Thor Ragnarok. It is confusing if you're a viewer who is just jumping in, for sure. From Sack's perspective, I understand it. But, I mean, it also is, it like, there is a whole lot of story continuity leading up to that. But at the same time, all the movies are designed to be kind of compartmentalized pieces that you can enjoy. I, I mean, Hulk is a recognizable character. Most people understand who he is. Didn't Black Knight kind of get dropped? They were starting to, like, hint him, but then the movie he was in didn't do well or something. 
Yeah, they did just release art for a new Fantastic Four. Doctor Doom would be so cool. They were really setting up the stage for, you know, a really cool, uh, like, arc and big bad. But then, like, they've had all their drama with their main actor, like Jonathan Majors or whatever. Yeah, he was the side character in Eternals and Eternals bombed, right? So it's not sure. It's kind of up in the air if Black Knight is even coming out or not, right? But then wasn't he also in something else recently? I think he was in a Marvel TV show as well. As that same character. Anyway, let's move on to another map. But before I do, let me show you another teaser. I did just read that they're going to start slowing down and not doing like five shows a year and 10 movies and it'll kind of go back to a slower arc rate because people are just completely overwhelmed and it's like a full-time job to keep up with the content now. Like even during the pandemic, it was hard to keep up with it. I do think that... Um, I don't know. They're all the, the story's much too convenient nowadays in a lot of them. There's so many Marvel shows that have like completely just been were starting off good or like had a lot of potential and just you know what I mean, went off the rails. Yes, Daredevil, the new Daredevil looks cool for sure. I kind of heard that Sin Eater might be in that. I'm not 100% certain, though. I, I am right about the load of Marvel. Yeah, it's just too much to keep in. It's content overload, right? Um, and it's not to say the content's bad. It's just so hard. Like... The basic, most people only have a certain amount of budget for entertainment and movies in a year. And it's not like they're going to up their budget just to go watch a hundred movies a year just to keep up with the Marvel stuff. Just watch it on streaming later. Save some money, you know? Really? You didn't like Moon Knight? I actually really enjoyed Moon Knight out of almost all of the newer Marvel series. That's one of my favorite, if I have to be honest with you. But I think Oscar Isaac really carried it, if I'm being frank. He just was brilliant. Anyway, moving on. Let's play this video again and talk about Dungeon Alchemist. <sighs> yeah, she did pretty good. It's like uh, Haley Atwell or whatever. Isn't that her name or something? She was in Ender's Game years ago. Count Ducula. <laughs> I do think when Marvel was doing their pacing for TV series before where there was only like a handful and they were gritty and dark, like the ones that were on Netflix really got it right. You know what I mean? Um, oh, Haley Atwell was Peggy Carter. Okay, well then who is, what's her name then? Haley Steinfeld. Okay, I knew it was a Haley something name. My bad. So when you see these buildings being placed, I, I someone pointed this out to me. I'd watched this video like a bunch of times before I noticed this. Notice that he like you in this clip, the the building gets dragged and moved after it's shaped. That, to me, is something very cool. I am very excited to see what that turns into, for sure.
Yep, did you see there? What you would want to do is connect them before you generate them. Swedish Cook, at least from what I've found. If you generate them and try to connect them after, it's a little bit more difficult. But if you generate the structures and put a connection between them, or like if you draw the shapes and put a connection between them and then generate it, it's, it's a lot more straightforward. <clears throat> and like we are getting incredibly close for this update like very very close Uh, not yet. We'll get preview stream dates when we get closer to a launch date window. I can't... I like to do the preview streams in the, like, two or three weeks leading up to the launch. And we're just not there yet, unfortunately. Hey, Ricky, how are you? Welcome back. You know, that's a good question, Sack. I kind of put it on hold temporarily while I was mostly investigating magic and preparing for the update and doing a couple other things on the side. And it's also due in part to the fact that the rules change drastically and I have to redo all the art for the rules. So, um, <laughs> just haven't, it's, a, it's on my to-do list. Once the rule set is updated, then I'll post a new variant. I will say, too, uh, with round rooms, I noticed quite a few round assets to go in tandem with them to help, like shelving and books that'll fit to round spaces, uh, like spiral stairs and whatnot. There's a bunch of stuff that'll fit, like, very fluidly in those spaces. Hey, Wolf Gold, how you doing? Highland Lass, I, I think most of that will come out in Fun With Objects, if anything. And Fun With Objects is... I, I have no idea where that will drop. So, um, our next update will kick off the beginning of our partnership with Bite the Bullet Studios. This uh, logo here is their brand. Um, Bite the Bullet is a pair of 3D artists who will be commission we commissioned to make us pretty much a set of token packs for each update that remains. So Magic is our next update. You'll get some Magic-themed tokens in the next update totally free. I mean, Virgil, there's quite a few on the workshop, my man. There's like a lot of static assets on the workshop. Sorry, one moment here.
Ricky, can I ask you a quick question, kind of a preemptive question? Have you subscribed to a lot of assets from the workshop? Say more than 50, maybe 100 or more. So you haven't opened any maps from the workshop and downloaded assets like this or browsed assets and downloaded them and added them to your collection from the workshop to use in maps. So you, have, you haven't downloaded many custom assets. So the most common issue people are running into right now and I'm just going to point this out for everyone is people will download and subscribe to like hundreds of assets from the workshop, right? So a couple things we're going to cover. If you have a ton of assets you're subscribed to, that'll slow down your load time. The assets on the workshop can vary wildly in optimization compared to Dungeon Alchemist assets. In fact, there's some assets on the workshop that'll just crash DA because they're just not that great of an asset. Um, others are massive, up to 200 megabytes, meaning like 20 times the average file si map size of Dungeon Alchemist. This uh, map here was shared by uh, Virgil Tanner. He actually sent me this file to share on the stream, so I figured, hey, why not? Anyway, um, yeah, I was going to show people how to mass unsubscribe really quickly. It, there's a couple ways to do it. So you, first off, you can unsubscribe from individual assets within DA. So you can go to your subscribed asset section and click on the asset and click unsubscribe. But if you can't load DA, that's part of the problem Ricky's running into, right? He needs to go into Steam. So you can either go to the Steam website or go through the Steam browser and you would go to the workshop in Dungeon, you know, in, in basically you find Dungeon Alchemist, go to the workshop and on the right side, it'll show over here, it says your files. You can click subscribed items and then you can just click unsubscribe from all. This is a fresh wipe. It, wipe, it unsubs from every single asset every single map simultaneously so this is like the nuclear option okay but you'll notice your da runs a lot smoother after next the other option is within the steam uh like loader one second within the steam loader you can uh, click on Dungeon Alchemist and it says Workshop right here. If you right click on it, you can go in and go to Workshop. You can see the assets here. You can uncheck them to prevent them from loading in DA. They'll just still be downloaded. So later on you can recheck them and they'll run again. Or you can unsub from them here by hit hitting the trash. That's another way to do it. So there's a couple ways right in Steam that makes it very quick. And then there's a way within Dungeon Alchemist that you can unsub from them one at a time. So that's one way. Now, Ricky, the other thing you're going to want to consider doing if it's not running and you don't think you have a lot of assets. Unsubscribing, the one I showed you from before, clears the entire collection. It, the only assets that won't be gone are the ones you've uploaded. Unchecking can hide them from your load order, even ones you've, you've loaded. But here, if you just hit, click the trash, this is one at a time, but it's still very quick because it's all of the assets in one place instead of page after page after page. There's a lot. So if let's say you've uploaded assets and you don't want them to run in the background every time you load DA, or maybe you've installed assets, but you don't want to delete them, but you don't want them running with DA every time. If you uncheck them, that removes them from loading up in DA ever. 
uh, they'll still be just stored somewhere on your computer, right? So just a, a file somewhere. But if you check them again, they'll come back. If that's my understanding of it, at least. I'm not 100% certain on that. But if you click the trash, it removes it entirely. Unsubs, removes it. So one's kind of like hidden, one's unsub. You can also change the load order. So you can put certain objects above each other to have priority so they'll load first. There's several ways to approach this problem. A couple of them are in Steam, and then the other options are in DA. Now, for our friend here, uh, Ricky, who might that might not solve his problem. Ricky, I want you to do one other thing. This is very important. Follow these instructions to the letter. You open up Steam, you find Dungeon Alchemist, and you right-click on it. Okay? You go to Properties. Okay, next, go to installed files. And this is good for any of you. If Dungeon Alchemist won't open for some reason or it's buggy or crashing a lot, acting weird. Exactly, Wolfgold. As Wolfgold stated, if you open up a map that's one of your maps that you don't have the assets on hand or if it's from the workshop, anytime it needs the assets again, it'll prompt you to download them. Um, I will say I have run into an issue if assets are unchecked and it tries to download them again because it runs into a loop. So you may want to just make sure you recheck assets. Like I only uncheck my personal assets. That way they don't run every time with DA. I wouldn't uncheck, you know, ones that you can just unsubscribe from really easily. You can't unsub from your own assets. It's like a kind of a weird thing. They just kind of permanently exist. So that's a way to hide them. Anyway, Ricky, if you click verify integrity of game files right here, any of you ever running into issues with DA, you click this. It'll go through and check the files to see if any of them are corrupt or missing, and it will download and replace them automatically. So if even one file is bad, it, Dungeon Alchemist may not boot. I've had this happen many of times, many, many times. So always remember... That if DA is running slow or won't load, there's a couple things you can do locally to solve the problem almost instantly. Either unsubscribing from assets through Steam, either all, I, I basically once a week unsub from everything. And that helps your DA run smooth, run, runs a lot, like a lot smoother because then the RAM isn't overloaded on your machine, loading up all those assets when you start up a map or DA. And then just download them as you need them. The other thing, the verifying the integrity of files, if they're, like I said, if there's even a single corrupt file or if there's a handful, then you're going to run into problems. You need to do that. So that just check that pretty regularly. So remember, right-click, properties. You can either go to installed files and verify integrity or workshop and just start unsubbing from assets. It's actually pretty nice. Anyway, any other questions related to that? Hey, Ricky, will you go through those steps really quick and let me know if that fixes your problem? If that doesn't fix your problem, let me know and we'll go from there. We might have to start up a, a support ticket on the Discord if it doesn't, though, because that seems like a little bit more in-depth. Thank you, Seisu, for dropping that link. We were on the, we were on the same wavelength there for sure. Remember, these streams are designed to allow you to get real-time support and guidance and give me suggestions and feedback. So if you've run into a problem, you can tell me about it and I'll try to help you. Or if it's something, you know, it's a suggestion, I'll add it to my notes and share it with the devs. But yeah, Ricky, I want to try and fix you up while I'm here. So let's uh, let's do it. We got about an hour, so we can keep working on it. Roll check attack. How you doing? I can't create oval or round pieces. Do you mean buildings? No one can, except for the devs and myself right now. Unless you build them by hand. If you're using the AI, you won't be able to make shapes like that yet. It's not available yet. 
I'm I, earlier if you saw it, it was a teaser. It was me showing off, you know, updates, pending stuff that'll be out eventually. Now, if you go to objects and structural, though, there is a round construction set where we have like round platforms, floors, walls, and these can be used to make round buildings very effectively. I'll show you in a minute how you can make some round rooms with these really quick. <clears throat> uh, Ninja asks from YouTube, hey there, just wanted to ask if there's any release date for a newer update. Unfortunately, we don't have a specific date yet, but we're getting very close. This update will arguably be the largest update ever with Dungeon Alchemist. Uh, there was so many tackle, uh, so many very, very challenging things the devs had to tackle for this update to be just right. And we're still fine tuning a couple aspects of those in testing internally. So this update will include uh, you know, round rooms, diagonal rooms, rooms you can raise up or sink down, rooms you can rotate, rooms you can move before you generate them. All of these things working in tandem um, is very complex, but we felt like it had to be released all at the same time, or it just would be kind of awkward. So all of this too is foundational steps towards multi-level buildings. Um, our next update, by the way, everyone who's wondering is titled Magic. And I would expect within the next, you know, few weeks, probably three to four weeks, that you'll be receiving updated information related to the release date or at least a release window. Is it possible to reduce render scale, Garfield asks? That's an interesting question. Yeah, so Garfield, first off, the closer you're zoomed in, the less you're rendering at any given point with Dungeon Alchemist. It's a real-time 3D renderer, so if you're zoomed in, it's going to be better on your machine. So focus on small areas. That's one tip. Tip two, go to File, Settings. In here, you can change the graphics quality down to low. If you have a monitor with different resolutions support, say you're on a 4K monitor that also supports 1080, you can down to 1080 and that uses significantly less resources than a than a 4K resolution would. You know what I mean? So that's another thing to consider. You have UI scale, which you can change the scale of the buttons, but that doesn't necessarily um, affect so much performance as it is just easier on your own eyes. So personal, you know, preference. Now last, if you go to the view tab, if you look at like the water here, and uh, stuff like the water, how it has like a ripple to it. If you go to the view tab and hit disable natural animations, it will stop water and trees and things like that from moving subtly. They usually kind of sway. Regular like effects and stuff and objects that move will continue to keep moving. Like these particle effects, because these are from this menu here. They're like wispy white fog on top of the water. But, you know natural animations will stop at that point and that saves you a few frames too so you can squeeze out a few frames by adjusting these settings accordingly so uh disabling natural animations uh going into settings and changing the quality from high to low and if you're loading a map that's pretty big for instance or it's got a lot of stuff in it always change to low before you load it because then it loads up faster you can change it to high once you're inside um, and then lastly, you know, re resolution. We hope to improve, you know, a backend menu options with time to allow you to increase performance. And as always, we are in early access. So optimization comes with time as we get closer to the end of the early access cycle. Things are getting optimized as we go, but pretty much every two or three updates, the devs will sit down and refine the AI and fine tune things in the background to make it run better for the average user up to the high end machine. <clears throat> Get a sip of water really quick.
Okay. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh, I mean, with the smaller machine too, keeping your map size tight and small is a good idea. I probably, you know, if your machine doesn't have that great of specs or runs kind of poorly, consider keeping your map small to begin with and slowly expanding them instead of starting big and building in that space. Start with like a 20 by 20 and then you can grab the edges you need and expand it or build a house off the edge and it'll expand it. So you can expand, you know, as you go. So like if you take the AI and try to draw a room off the edge, it will also expand the map. I'm trying to see how big, how many people we have watching right now. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. This is very cool. I'm like impressed with this. I'm I like this. Like obviously Twitch is going to be our like main route of support because I've been streaming on Twitch almost exclusively for the last year and a half for our channel. We used to stream on Facebook a little bit and I mean not many people watch streams on like Twitter, you know, but I'm going to stream on these platforms nonetheless to try and see if we can garner any kind of support and grow from there. Oh, that's very true, Random Ladybird. Yeah, so we had a, a map making, we have an ongoing map making contest every other Saturday here on Twitch. And it's also kind of half hosted in our Discord. So uh, it's called the Dam Challenge. You know, when you save a map in Dungeon Alchemist, it's just saved as a .dam file. So we have the Dam Challenge. The last Dam Challenge was 10 by 10. And there were so many interesting maps. Like this one here that was the winner, the Subaquatic Temple, uh, which is... It's just great how how much map was packed into a 10 by 10 space. Oh, there was so much creativity that came out to play. Your map was stunning, by the way, Hieronimo. I just wanted, it was cool to see how much like people made and worked with what they had. Yeah, this one's really pretty. It just goes down, 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 down. You know what I mean? There was a couple of really cool 10 by 10s that just, I mean, they were all really cool. Don't get me wrong. Why can't I, oh, there. But like, it just was shocking. So much creativity went into them. This one here was really cool. You know what you could do is have a side room that you can manipulate objects in and then move them over to the main room and then delete the side room later. You know what I mean? Because I know that some objects won't go into such a tight space until you resize them. I also always leave collisions off just to make sure. I know, I know you know that, but it's just, yeah. It is kind of a neat challenge to tr force yourself to work in the confines of a 10 by 10 space. And it's crazy how much map can be packed in... 10 by 10. Very cool. So, uh, let me take a moment to ask our community here, everyone across the board, every stream site, how are you enjoying Dungeon Alchemist at the moment? Are there any frustrations you're running into? Or are you just completely satisfied and happy with it if you are running into frustrations what what are they like well you know let's let's each share one minor frustration or thing we wish could change in dungeon alchemist if you have one i don't i you know i would like to take lists and lists but you know there's a lot of people watching so let's try to keep it so everyone can at least share some feedback if they have some <laughs> the uh the other thing too is you know, if you are super satisfied with Dungeon Alchemist, what is your favorite thing about it? Like, what is the reason you are so satisfied with it? Oh, Hieronimo, right? I, you know, am I not living the dream or what? Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I really love my job, and I love that I get to essentially talk about fantasy and tabletop gaming and map making, like, all day. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, random ladybird. So, yeah, you don't really like it when the colliders of the objects, the invisible colliders, overlap and you can't see them. So you have no idea why you can't grab it. You should be able to, you know what I mean? There are colliders for a lot of objects, especially ones on the on the workshop that are just not that great. They have, you know, because every user has to confine, set their own colliders. So now the other thing, too, is a lot of our colliders. So, for instance, like this chess piece... It's probably just a big cylinder, not, it doesn't go all the way up around all the contours of the chess piece. It's a cylinder from the base all the way to the top. Does that make sense? So on occasion, some of them are bigger than they appear. Tillers, yeah, that's a great way to use Dungeon Alchemist as an immersion tool by grabbing good shots or like screenshots or video clips at various angles to use as handouts fantastic way i i know centamar i'm sorry i wish i was in the hiring department you know i would hire everyone to be honest with you though i do think part of the reason we're not just like on a hiring spree is the devs are careful and methodical about how strategic and long term they want dungeon alchemist to be and they want the money to last a while and not you know be put into things necessarily, you know, just all sorts of random projects. You know, they're very methodical, precise, and uh, they have a long-term plan for Dungeon Alchemist to keep it in, you know, the public eye for as long as possible. You would like to see the terrain brushes not locked to biomes, okay? Island last, you know, you could send me some examples in uh, Discord DM of the rocks you're talking about. That would be great. I would love that. So Highland last says, usual frustration, see above, but utterly love uh, the total escapism and creative inspiration for the D&D games. Would dearly love stone assets to suit my Orkney-based builds, but that is because I'm a perfectionist. I've got another map of yours I want to show, just a variation of it really quick. Sorry, I jump around a lot there, Virgil. We kind of follow the conversation as it goes. If there's a support need, we jump into another map. If we're talking about a map, we jump into it. This is the same variation at night. Looks very cool. So. I mean, it's a good sidetrack if I'm providing support and just hyping up community maps, right? My Gillikin Woods printout. Turned out quite distorted from having to use the lighting filter to make the plants purple. Huh. Interesting, Gamroot. And are you printing it locally on your own printer? Or is it, uh, did you take it to a print shop? A couple questions along with that, Gamroot. Uh, or Gamra, would you, did you try printing it with a regular one without the purple filter first as kind of like a control to see what it was looking like in comparison? I'm wondering if your printer settings, like, you know, when you go to print, it has the property window and you can change all the color stuff. If maybe you can dial back the color a little bit there so it's not so problematic. By distorted, I don't know exactly what you mean. Was it washed out? Was it too bright? I 
I mean, what exactly is dwarven architecture look like? Are you just basing it off of like the Hobbit movie, you know, <laughs> and like Lord of the Rings? Because we do have a lot of that, actually. A good amount of it, like the marble stonework and stuff. So you're basing it off of kind of a preconceived notion of someone's art style. I mean, expecting us to have an art style in tandem with someone else might be problematic. Um, but I, I, I would assume with time, our room types will flesh out more and more. <coughs> but I do think they try to keep them generic. I wouldn't say they're human types. I would say they're pretty just run of the mill, which could be used for pretty much anything. Now, I mean... If you're to say that, like, the vanilla stuff is the most human-like, then I guess to that end, that might be the case. Um, but I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, that's just a matter of personal preference. Some people think of dwarves and envision completely different stuff. You know what I mean? So I, I think with time, you know, there'll be more and more aesthetics that fill those niches. But I wouldn't say there'd be a whole dedicated, like, set of them. Um, just mainly because most of our remaining updates don't really attribute to any of those sets, you know? So, like, in High Seas, I'm sure we'll have, like, Elven-type boats, you know? Um, but I, and assets to build Elven-type boats, because that's usually critically tied to their culture. Um, you know, but, like, I don't know. I, I, that's where it's kind of problematic. Most of the, the room types are usually around the aesthetics of what we're doing in the update. Does that make sense? Actually, dwarves do build boats. They just don't like to swim. And it depends on which which continuity or culture or story you're reading. Some dwarves sink when they're in water. Some dwarves love water. Really just depends. I actually am writing a, a, a homebrew campaign where I made a new kind of you know how there's like a lot of sub races of elves and there's like half orcs half elves and all these different sub races of elves but there's really only like dwarves and dwergar right when it comes to dwarves and i wanted in more sub races so i kind of made another one yeah exactly vikings and dwarf culture are kind of usually intrinsically tied and vikings were pretty much like the boat masters for the longest time so it really just depends on where you get your uh you know your your prompts of culture for dwarves was it token or you know what i mean is it uh like folklore is it uh you know video games like <laughs> and in my case i actually just wanted something new and unique so i actually made dwarves that love to fish they love to uh they love to travel on on the water and they use it for trade and uh for essentially to speed up commerce in their kingdom and their boats are reminiscent of viking culture so that's what I took inspiration from in my personal, you know, homebrew. But to each their own, right? But yeah, I understand your concern there and what you want, uh, Centimar. I do think, though, a focused, you know, lens of being like, oh, this is the exact, you know, dwarf culture stuff I'm looking for or elven culture might be, might be disappointment in the long run. But at least a lot of different things that might fit in those aesthetics would be more probable. But, like, looking at our next update, the room types for magic are things like Artificer's Workshop, okay? That's not necessarily tied to any race. It could be any race, really. I mean, it could be a dwarf. It could be a gnome. It could be an elf. It could be anything. It's just kind of, like, generic. Oh, man, that one was really cool, for sure. Virgil, the houseboat map you were sharing on Discord the other day? That was neat. Okay, we got to take a look at this map. Uh, 
because it is uh, a little crazy. Sailor Yugoth, are you here, my friend? Oh no, what? Did the stream just crash? Weird. YouTube, are you still there? Facebook, are you still there? Twitch didn't, but it looks like the others might have. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. On my end, it looked like it stuttered and crashed. Cool, perfect. I just wanted to make sure I didn't lose anyone. Right? Okay, well, I'm still getting used to this. Basically, this restream interface is all new to me, and I'm learning as I go, right? And because of that, there are aspects that, uh, like, I'm still kind of learning, and things hiccup and have problems, and I'm not sure exactly how to react to them at times. From my end, it looked like it was crashing. So, has anyone seen Howl's, uh, was it Howl's Moving Castle or Howl's Wandering Castle, right? That Studio Ghibli anime? Because this is straight up the nightmare view, uh, fuel version of that. Look at these spider legs. Right? That's just a, 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 it's like a pagoda lamp. Right? Isn't that what those are? Like the, the tissue paper lamps? That's smart. Moving castle. <laughs> Uh, this is cool. Right, that's perfect for that. They're great for using that. That's a brilliant idea. It just looks like a lit up, you know, lattice window. This is beautiful, Taylor Yuga. How long did this take you to build? <laughs> Why isn't there a Sauron? Why not? A week? Sailor Yugoth, when do you sleep, bro? So... This is what it would be like to be. Ah, darn. Okay, this is what it's like to be Sauron. I was hoping to be inside of the force sphere, but my camera won't go in. I was gonna, you know, just give everyone that feeling of being the Dark Lord for just a minute.
Oh, it shunted me out. That's cheating. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I don't know if some of you remember, uh, like a couple months ago, we had kind of like a sit-down and we talked about like... Feedback, kind of like we were earlier, you know, your, your thoughts on DA and what you like, what you don't like. Okay, but... You know what? Stop speaking facts, Virgil. Just stop. Just stop. Okay, I'm done. I'm I'm done. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I talking about? <clears throat> Looks like just a like a some sort of protected village that's under a force sphere or a dome of themselves is like a mini village look at this well I, that just goes to show how big this castle is in comparison that's essentially like what you did in your uh your cafe huh your uh, space fay cafe a pixie settlement oh, okay that makes sense that's why it's so small This is a brilliant map, though. I really like it. There's a lot of neat little stuff going on. You got, like, a lovely little camp. Very thick, dense forest. Lots of environmental stuff going on here. This just looks like a, like a cool little, maybe like an herbalist shack or something. Some ruins from a place, you know, a civilization long gone. Maybe a, like a, a wizard's tower or some, you know, remnant that's left and... It's held together by its magic or whatever. I don't know. Could be anything. I like how there's just a little bit going on. Like, a lot going on in this little space, I mean. I guess the map is rather large. Is this, like, meant to be a world map from top down? Like a regional? This is very cool. Very, 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 very cool. So I'm going to open up the Twitch stream. Darn. I was going to try and watch it, but it's like crashed. <laughs> Or the Twitter stream, not the Twitch. I want to make sure it's working. This thing on? Test, test, test. Gotcha. So it's kind of like a like a overworld. Doesn't look like it's possible to get inside. I'm going to try and take the camera in. Yeah, it seems like it's mostly just appearance. Do you have like accompanying maps with each of these? So like a scene for this and a scene for that. Hey, see you, Virgil. Thanks for being here, buddy. We'll talk later.
I mean, honestly, in order for us to make an accurate statement, we'd probably have to see what kind of groundwork they're putting into it. You know what I mean? I don't think there's any, any interconnectivity between our two companies in that degree where they give us like an inside track to that and allow us to develop around it. We're mostly reactionary to what they put out at this time. Um, but that being said, if they do, you know, release something that supports multi-level or multi-tier, you know, we'll probably be a lot more likely to at least make our, you know, version of multi-level work more succinctly with theirs. That's the hope, right? Right now, we're kind of playing chicken with most developers, right? And that means that, like, you know, we're like, hey, we're going to eventually do multi-level, but we need, you know, a system that supports it effectively. Currently, the current... Uh, plan is to i'm from my understanding is essentially have a map that would be kind of sliced or exported in layers so you have like you know the upper like floor and lower areas you know as you go down and essentially each of those slices would just be a new image and that would be a new scene so this it's kind of like what you're doing now most people do is build a separate scene for each floor it's essentially the same thing just all in one map but Remains to be seen how they support that within their system. Hey, see you later, Mike. Thank you for watching. You're welcome back anytime. Like, if their system comes out and allows for more interactivity with that, like, let's, what, how I imagine Foundry offering support for it. You know, when you import a map to Foundry, you have your background layer and like a foreground layer. They'd probably have background and then layer one two three four five up to like you know ten and that would allow you ten floors so each of those layers is a new floor that you could essentially set access points at like staircases doors portals ramps you know whatever ladders where when they get to that point it triggers that new scene above it but i it remains to be seen what you you know what foundry offers that's how i had imagined it would work within their existing system i like all the little detail loading dock area here contoured landscapes what do you mean wolf gold We're actually getting close to wrapping up. We only have about 27 minutes left in today's stream. So I want to make sure while we are live that if anyone has any questions today, needs any support uh, related to Dungeon Alchemist, you're struggling to build a certain type of map, or maybe Dungeon Alchemist isn't working how you think it should, or uh, you're having trouble exporting to your VTT of choice, anything you need help with, let me know and I'll try and help. Yeah, I just noticed this one right here. Hmm. Oh, found the other one. In the next update, uh, so we uh, had like a fireside like a month ago to talk about uh, tokens, right? Like what's going on with uh, like how we can improve the token interface and make it better. And the reason we talked about this is because there's going to be uh, a good amount of token stuff in the next update, like all the new magic tokens and whatnot. So in the next update, the devs have added a feature that I'm very excited uh, for. Um, many of you may know that when you move a token, it kind of auto-rotates. Notice how it's pivoting around that like round point in the center. 
And a lot of people dislike that, don't really care for it, because it jumps to a spot where you don't want it if you need it in a precise location. That's not very helpful. So there will be an option to disable that in the next update, which is really cool. Very excited for that. It'll just move like a regular object. But you can still look through it. And I mean, that's kind of intentional. On a map like this, it would be so many random line of sight lines. It it almost takes away from the map in a top down. You know what I mean? So it's really dependent on the map and the situation. I do think, you know, it'd be nice if maybe we could flip on an option to just add like line of sight for terrain on export. That way, if there's a rock or a tree or something, it would add it. But just, I mean, the more of that you add, it starts getting really insane. That's part of the, the issue is like the sheer level of line of sight interactivity at that point becomes astronomically higher. Now, I do agree, though, that some items should offer more. And I think as we begin to scale upward into multi-level, we'll probably address more of that as we go. Things like pillars and various structural objects and things that should provide more cover. Or at least line of sight breaks. Interesting. What, uh, what, uh, you're gonna know I'm gonna ask what DPI you exported at, say so. So I could foresee a lot of people being irritated that they have to remove a lot of lines every time. You know what I mean? I do think what we should do is have an option to either paint, like, either a quick option in the map to paint over an area that like you want the light not exported in that area so you could be like hey i don't want the line of sight lines in this area or i do want them in this area so if you painted over a forest it would be like every one of these objects would provide line of sight like walls huh interesting I mean, your players would just see nothing of sl but slivers. You know what I mean? It would just be like little weird, like pie slices of the environment. So you got to find the balance between like, oh, the level of immersion and the line of sight to like what actually is realistic. Like if you're in a forest and you're staring out into a forest, your, your line of sight is pretty, pretty wide as long as the trees are rather separated, you know, five to 10 feet across and apart from each other. Now, granted, if they were like an evergreen like this, like a Christmas tree, it would have a lot more block and area you can't see than just a tree trunk. So it depends on the type of tree, right? And the type of forest. Mac, have you ever created a map with a tablet and a digital pen? Hmm. Like a Dungeon Alchemist map? I don't think we offer tablet support. I mean, unless you're using like a Microsoft Surface or something. That would be tricky, I'd imagine. Mostly because the interface is designed heavily around a keyboard and mouse. Um, I did, however, I have built maps using a tablet for Incarnate. I tested Incarnate for about a year. And uh, I used my tablet a lot with it. It was a lot easier to build maps with the tablet than it was with the computer, in my opinion. So it just depends on the, the program, you know what I mean? But because Incarnate's all web-based, the tablet was ideal for that situation.
But I mean, like, in forests, walls of trees don't always occur naturally. You know, they're more spread out, typically. The canopy of the forest spreads out to allow maximum, like, capture of sun. You know what I mean? So, like, um, I, I don't know. There are dense forests, don't get me wrong. But at least the forests I'm used to seeing in, like, the U.S., trees are, like, spread apart. Pine tree forests are, like... The trees are like 20, 30 feet apart from each other, and you could see in every direction. The only place people could hide is directly behind the tree itself, you know? Oh, cool. That's pretty neat. You know, I have a drawing tablet, like a Wacom older one. I've had it for years. It's just kind of sat here collecting dust. I had it on my desk, and I was like, I just don't draw enough. My wife is the one who is really talented at drawing and art, and she uses our iPad for it all the time. So I don't like to take it from her. And like anytime I need something, I'll just be like, hey, babe, can you hurry and edit this image for me? She's like, oh, of course. She loves doing it. So, you know, she just helps me out if I need help. I mean, I know how to edit images and whatnot and do stuff on the tablet. But for the most part, it's hers. So I just let her deal with it. You know, you gotta, there's probably a point of diminishing returns, too, in the amount of time saved versus a detailed map. Because as you start adding more detail, you know, in levels, height, verticality, detail in rooms and all these things, you're spending a lot of time making the map and making sure all that works in the VTT, right? So it almost becomes like a, like a sunken cost, but you're adding like a super level detail of immersion that borderlines along like a video game, you know, where everything loads into place automatically, sound effects and, you know, encounters and, and whatnot. But you're, hey, that helps, Wolf Gold. See, I, I don't have that luxury. Luckily, I do get paid to like pretty much just talk about Dungeon Alchemist all the time. So that helps, but <laughs> I don't get paid to play D&D yet this map is stunning absolutely crazy sailor you goth so that's what it would be like for our regional so each of these are like kind of different like in okay there's a small village here there's a small village here there's something here this is the wasteland marshes and then this here is the wandering castle that everyone's terrified of, right? Yeah, Highland Last supports like lots of after school clubs for the kids in her school and runs D&D games all the time. This looks great. This is a perfect encounter map. See, if you're, if you're like replicating the display and you can get the mouse interface kind of tied to the pen correctly, like the buttons and stuff, it probably could work for placing objects and for painting objects, especially. It might also be easy for drawing rooms and whatnot. You just really have to adapt the pen and the buttons on the tablet to the Dungeon Alchemist interface. If it's one that hooks up to your computer and it acts like a another display that either is a, an extra display or duplicates an existing one, then yeah, you more than likely could run Dungeon Alchemist with it. Excuse me. I really just like how run down this looked. You know what I mean? You put a lot of detail into the uh, little minutia.
the various broken stone pavers. It's like, oh, it's been filled in with dirt and kind of washed out over time or... It just, you know, and it, there's so much detail, but it, it it attests to the amount of, like, time and degradation this place has seen. You know what I mean? Like, it just looks like it slowly just collapsed over time in its own weight. As nature has just slowly reclaimed this environment bit by bit. Is there a setting in, like, 5e that is the equivalent of Fallout meets Fantasy? Like, meets, uh, meets, uh, you know, like, Faerun? Or something like that? I guess that would be, like, Adventure Time to a degree, if you think about it. But that's not an official setting, but it really does fit that aesthetic. Eberron to a degree, but it's not like... I, I feel like Eberron's more like a golden age than a like a Fallout apocalyptic age, you know? A downfall. Like, if anything, Fallout shows it's after a golden age, right? Where everything is super advanced, modern. You know, in the Fallout storyline is... They've got advanced technology and machines running. Everything's, you know, personal robots and all these things and then everything goes to crap so whereas eberron it's like steampunk futurism everything is past a war and it's in a in a state of like uh advancement dark sun yeah isn't dark sun kind of uh problematic and by that i mean like the story is very um or environment can lead to a. Uh, I don't know, it, it's just kind of, uh, in the modern era, it doesn't fit very well. Not very PC, so to speak. Gotcha. So, like, if any of you are familiar with Adventure Time, Adventure Time is pretty much Pendleton Ward's, like, homebrew, fi uh, like, campaign, D&D campaign, turned into a cartoon or a long-term cartoon with, you know, a bunch of filled-in spots and story. And, I mean, you can tell that because there's, like, literally 5e monsters in his show. <laughs> there's, like, a lich and other things. <laughs> but it's very, like, derivative of things like like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And in his storyline, the 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 fantasy world they live in takes place in the future after kind of after an apocalyptic era post a nuclear war which everyone calls the mushroom wars in in the adventure time era. And it's about a thousand years after. And when that happened, a bunch of realms kind of mashed together and caused a cataclysm or apocalyptic cataclysm. And these realms were allowed to bleed into each other, but there was a lot of strife and problems. And then this is more of an era of uh, kind of starting to solidify and become more like normal, but there's still magic and there's technology from the previous era about like, you'll see little bits of computers and things around, but also magical items and it's like why are there magical items and technological items in the same environment because they're the realms blended but yeah sack it's called adventure time the dog is named jake and it's actually voiced by joe dimaggio who is like probably one of the or yeah no john joe dimaggio john dimaggio he's like probably one of the better like voice actors of our generation he did Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. He uh, is Jake the dog, obviously. And then um, he's in Futurama as Bender. You know, like probably one of the most iconic cartoon characters of like the last 20 years. Yep. I just love this environment because it feels like either there was like a massive like, you know, plague or something happened. All the people died here. Maybe uh, something happened, you know, uh, nearby a magic battle or uh, anything really, you know, a zombie apocalypse tore through here. And now everything's just crumbled after years of decay. And that's all that's left. Seriously, really good way to capture like the state of a decay, right? 
in this map, I, I'm definitely 9 or 10. Easily 9 or 10. Or are you talking about the show that I was talking about? I rate Adventure Time easily 9 or 10. It is like top tier modern like entertainment cartoon stuff. And it was meant for kids on a you know Cartoon Network, but it definitely was meant more for their parents who were watching it with them. It was like great for both. Leftovers of a massive cloud kill. Or could you imagine, you know, just like a massive explosion or famine or some sort of cataclysm tore through here and everyone fled and all that's left is the decay and ruin several years later. Everything's fallen down. Or look here, it looks like bones are ejecting from the ground, like maybe another realm, like the dead realm is pushing its way into this realm and it's like, uh, you know, gas, schools, zombies and stuff are tearing through and just destroying everything in sight. Gamma world? Interesting, that sounds kind of cool. This is, yeah, I mean, for sure. Hieronimo, how long did you take in each of these variations? Just a guesstimate, my friend. The murder of crows really, you know, really sends it home. Three hours per map or three hours for all four? I really love these little rooftops that you just, like the eaves you dropped in there. Drop, I ain't dropping no eaves, Mr. Gandalf, sir. Yeah, the crows are a great addition. I really love some of the cool, neat animated assets that have shown up on the workshop. Are you like me where you start working on a map, you can't work on it start to finish, like stage one to stage 10, you have to take a break and move to a different project and then you come back to it when you're more refreshed or inspired to get back on it? Because that's how I work on projects. I can't do one start to finish, I'll start on it a little bit, do like 10%, move on to something else, come back to it later. But the thing is I always get all my projects done on time, I just kind of do them in stages. I can't focus on a project from start to finish in a single like sitting. Unless, like, there is a deadline that it's, like, a new deadline that I have to do right away. You know what I mean? Like, something short notice. Uh, you know, I'm not aware of any new data around that Wolf Gold, like, new information. Did they make a public announcement about it or something? Because the last we spoke to them, they were pretty much standoffish to us and kind of shut down anything. So our de the devs kind of felt a little like they just didn't want to work with them and decided to do our own thing. That's my mainly the reason Dungeon Alchemist is fantasy agnostic. It's not really focused on one platform or another. We decided to just make it work for as many as possible within the fantasy setting, you know? I mean, I'm I, if you... See, Maptober ones, though, like, if you're trying to keep them 30 minutes or less, that's not too bad. Like, if I'm doing a map-making challenge where I'm challenging myself to sit for an hour and build a map, then, yeah, I'll sit for the entire thing. But usually, like, a large task, like, let's say I'm working on a big, you know, task around the home, like a project, or I'm working on a big project for our community. I don't do it all at once. I do it in, in sections, like small bite-sized sections. For sure. Big maps, I can't sit for, you know, 20 hours building a map or 10 hours building a map or even four hours. I, I think the maximum I'll sit working on a map is about an hour and a half, two hours. It's a combo factor for me. My, like, ADHD kind of, I can't, I can't focus on one thing too long. And then my sciatica is the other. 
So I'll get up, stretch, walk around, write down some ideas, think out some other things, work on a different, you know, I'll work on a different project and then come back to it. Dang, Zach. That is nuts. So many maps. <clears throat> so, Maptober will definitely be happening again this year. Um, and I will have... I. The thing is, is I don't want to piggyback on Incarnate's themes and do theirs. I like having our own themes that fit within the Dungeon Alchemist aesthetic, right? So they're probable and possible to do within Dungeon Alchemist. So that's why I handpicked the themes last year. Um, yet again, we'll probably be doing, yeah, like Maptober, Damtober, whatever, something similar. And... We, I mean, if you want to check the old ones that's archived in our Discord, I think you can check it still. But it's uh, basically a new theme every day, and you're encouraged to use that theme as inspiration, make a map of any shape or size. No contest, no prize, it's just for fun to share maps with the community and make them around that theme. I love this build. Little uh, lake ship, a uh, lakeside ship house. So, um, you know, the Vikings used to essentially build, you know, long uh, homes by flipping over a boat and turning it into a shelter, and it worked really great. Um, and in, you know, in ancient culture, if you could build a boat, essentially you could build a roof. It's It's keeping out water just the other way, right? So... With that in mind, um, I mean, here you have that same concept, just a flipped over kind of boat turned into a house. Very cute, comfy looking home. Very powerful build in a small punch, you know. Let's take a look inside. Lovely little bit of storage, a bed. A hearth. Pretty much everything you need to just live comfortably in the woods. Here they've got their garden in the back. That is two boats put together to make it a little bit longer. I feel like they probably did that so the boat would be the right width. Because if you extend it out, it would get too wide and too long, right? So they did two of them and you can see that where it meets in the middle right there but it looks so close it's it, i'll just call it one boat the string of lights is a great little feature there too the shield's great so where i grew up i grew up in utah right in utah there is a uh, a lot of uh churches and uh in there is a national park in utah called pine valley national park and right on the way into that Pine Valley National Park, there's an old historic church that's been there for like 100 plus years. And that church, <clears throat> when they were looking to commission it and get it built, they started asking around to the various carpenters in the area to see if they had the skill set to do it. And the only carpenter they could find that had the skill sets to build the roof was actually a boat maker. And so the inside of that chapel looks like the, the roof looks like a boat bed and the outside looks like a boat. It looks very interesting. And that's just a great example of a similar style of architecture. It's just crazy that it's still standing all this time later. And it essentially was just a boat flipped over on the bottom to deflect out all the water and keep it out. This is such a cute little build. It looks like it could act as a shop. You got a little smithy on the side. They're just look like a little self-sufficient, like, uh, you know, they've been doing some freaking panning here. Like, this looks like a homesteader, just that's self-sufficient out in the middle of nowhere. Pizza oven here? No, this here is a forge. Uh, 
And I mean, if the boat can keep out all that water and hold all the weight the other way around, it would mean it would most likely keep it all out too, right? It's a smart, logical thing to do. The house of a Viking Smurf. <laughs> Really neat environment. Great, like, use of the space. The cover over here for the storage on the side, like the cut wood. The little garden. The person who lives here is, it seems like they're living their best life. They've got beehives, a little bit of everything. Like, seriously, if I could have a home kind of like this, just in the middle of nowhere, and get me Starlink internet, y'all would never see me again except for on streams. <laughs> <laughs> this would be amazing. All right. It is time to wrap up the damn stream. Can I just say, I had a tremendous amount of fun hanging out with you all to here today um, across all platforms. It was very, very exciting to share the stream with our in more of our community than ever before. So thank you so much for everyone here from Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Trovo, Kick. I appreciate you all being here so very, very much. Um, these streams will hopefully grow with time and we'll have more interaction on the other platforms as we go. Um, obviously, you know, we haven't streamed on Facebook in a couple of years. We haven't streamed on YouTube really ever kick new trovo new all these places are new so we'll have to grow with time and i understand that so i appreciate those that came out and supported on those platforms appreciate all the long-term regulars here on twitch that were uh you know keeping the chat flowing today can i just say i appreciate each and every one of you whether you were lurking today or actively chatting whether it, you shared assets that were shown on the map or you shared a map that was shared on the on the stream uh, today, I really appreciate your contributions to our community. I mean, at this point right now, the workshop is just getting flooded with content and in the best way too. Um, we have 8,000 plus maps and 3,400 plus assets on the workshop. And it's just growing and growing and growing and growing. Every one of you, I encourage you, please take the time if you have a map that you're proud of share it on the workshop open it up click the steam workshop tab hit publish give it a good title get set it to public give it a nice little description maybe a hook for the story or tell people why you made this map use a lot of keywords so that way it's easy for people to find it and you know share it on the workshop and there's a good chance your map might end up on uh, on a damn stream uh our next stream is actually tomorrow uh, we have a very special stream in our Discord that is going to be uh, hosted by Asmodeus. I will be there uh, moderating, you know, supervising. But the point of tomorrow's stream is called Blender Basics. Blender is a 3D modeling tool that allows you to essentially build 3D animated models or still models and... Because you have the option to incorporate 3D models into Dungeon Alchemist, those two work hand in hand. So you can tune into the stream on our Discord, and it's only hosted in our Discord. They, there's no way to link Discord into the multi-stream I tried. So it's only in our Discord for right now. Um, but uh, if you can you drop a link for that actually really quickly? I've been recording all of them when they're all recorded. And it's all done. I'm going to edit them for time and upload the series to YouTube. But I wanted to wait till it was all available to upload it. Um, so when it's all said and done, it will be uploaded to YouTube. But uh, we still have two or three more classes left. So it'll have to be after that. Asmodeus, he is a, a 3D artist and animator for Pixar. So he kind of knows what he's doing. Has a lot of uh, it, very good knowledge and can guide you through making assets sculpting them applying properties to them to make them look better making them smaller and more decimated so they don't take up a lot of space and this next actual um 
uh, classes about animating assets. So be sure to tune in. It's an ongoing uh, tutorial series that we host in our Discord. The uh, the uh, next event is Monday with Map Maker Monday. Every Monday I host a stream here on Twitch, which will now be for every platform. Um, gosh, I wonder if I could come up with a restream link. Anyway, here is the, the event so you can RSVP. I might have to figure out a way to incorporate like a multi-link that goes to every platform or something. We'll figure it out. But uh, I appreciate everyone that was here today. Make sure you tune into our future streams so you don't miss out. Map Maker Monday is a great stream if you want to learn tips and tricks for how to build in Dungeon Alchemist. It's a live stream where I make a map in real time. I'm actually building a map as a tribute to our uh, community members who have won the Dam Challenge. The, uh, the Dam Challenge is an ongoing map making contest we host here on Twitch every other Saturday. Uh, so next Saturday is the Dam Challenge. So we show off maps that entered the challenge and the winner's map is the first map featured. The winner gets a $10 Hero Forge gift card. Their map promptly featured on our social pl platforms in the stream first as well. And their map is immortalized in this upcoming build, the Dam Challenge Gallery, which essentially is a museum that showcases the winners from past Dam Challenges. Over 40 winners will be in this map when all is said and done. Uh, okay, DA. You okay? is might have crashed downloading the asset well i was going to show you it probably is the banana see some assets just really aren't that optimized and crash out da cause problems but this is a big map too it is a massive map banana hey why isn't it spinning that's my only complaint say sue is that it should spin Yeah, Seymour didn't get his his bath today. So Mrs. Mac got a COVID booster yesterday, which is awesome because she can't get them like all of us can. She's immunocompromised and her rheumatologist strictly tells her when she can. So she was able to get the latest booster, which is fantastic news for us. But she's in recovery mode right now and her arm super duper sore. And we opted to not do a bath for Seymour this week. So he usually comes in right after his bath to say hi. So this map here is full of rooms. Each of the rooms showcases a winning map from a damn challenge. And when all said and done, there will be every one of these rooms loaded to the brim. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty. There's only like a couple rows left. And then I'm going to go through and put some finishing touches, such as uh, these little plaques that show a QR code that functions. You can scan it. It goes to the map in Steam Workshop. The name of the map, the creator of the map. Each room promptly features four images, including the top down and cool shots from within the map. And then two key items from the map. Hellraiser flooring, what are you talking about? Oh, it's coming along for sure. The center area here has like a, you know, like a ticket booth, information booth. These little guys here, oops, will be maps when I'm done. It'll be a top-down export saying you are here in spots, so like a map guide. And I'm thinking, earlier Seisu pointed this out, we should put the branding material from the various updates throughout the, maybe put up a painting that shows like the magic art and the treasury art and stuff like that. Oh, I never watched Hellraiser, so I'm not familiar. No, this just, this came out in the treasury. These gold floors and the wood floors. But yeah, each of these rooms, Hieronimo, you still here, bud? Look at this. Here is your, uh, your dungeon. The dungeon tavern. This is totally scannable. And these are not Rick rolls. They go to the map. Virgil Tanner was here earlier. That's his map. 
So many of you are immortalized in this. Here's another Hieronimo map. Might have to move that one. I don't like having two on the same row. So I'm going to probably move you back a couple rows. Mr. Wins all the time. So Hieronimo, before we had the two-week thing where we were every two weeks, it used to be weekly, remember? So yourself and Oliveira and a few people entered pretty regularly for like the first 20 or so damn challenges that were every week. And, you know, on occasion, this was before I set rules that like people can't win two times in a row. You know, we split it out to two times a month instead of every week. So some Hieronimo has statistically a little bit more wins because he entered a lot more times early on when it was like, a higher chance and also you know there was more chances to win because it was weekly so essentially he's featured a lot more early on as a result and i have to flex his maps around to make them fit you did take a year break this is true <laughs> he did that to let everyone catch up is what he's saying what would a Rickroll map look like? It would be if you took a picture of this and instead of going to the map on the workshop, it went to Rick Astley's never going to give you up. That would be the Rickroll. That's it. I noticed that Aloe Vera's back too. I, I, I hope we'll see her competing soon in uh, damn challenges. That'd be fun. Sack goes out undefeated on top and untied. He wins once and that's it. Dag, you know, sometimes you surprise me with the things in pop culture that you do not know. You like didn't know who the not the mama dinosaur was. Or you didn't know who what dinosaurs was. Remember this conversation we had? Or you didn't like it or something? And I was like, wait, I'm confused. What what was the combo? It was along those lines. <laughs> dinosaurs was amazing and had the realest finale of all time. All right, everyone that was a wrap had a lot of fun thank you so much for being here again my name is mac i'm the community manager for dungeon alchemist this is the official dungeon alchemist channel on all these varied platforms you caught today i really appreciate you tuning in and being a part of today's damn stream it was a great success but until next time we'll see you next time i give a damn mac out bye Goodbye.